Hello everyone, I'm Angela. In this video, Bethany and I chat about our experiences in creating Greek and Hebrew lessons. We also talk a little bit about what happens behind the scenes. If you haven't watched the first half, head over to her channel, Aleph with Beth, and check it out. Here's the second half. Enjoy. So what does your workflow look like for uh, planning lessons? Mm. How long does it take you to plan? How far in advance do you plan lessons? Um, so how long it takes me um, depends. <laughs> so mm. If it all goes well, probably a day or two to plan okay. a lesson. Um, but it could, you know, it could be a bit longer. Just also there's other prep to do, like finding props and sometimes mm. making them. Then it can take a bit longer. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, how much? I don't know, about eight hours or something to, to plan mm -hmm. a lesson if all goes well. And then, right, the next step would be to either have it checked before I film it, which is, I'm hoping to do that to save some time mm. <laughs> of making mistakes. <laughs> Fancy. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's, you know, limited resources, so I don't know mm -hmm. if that's going to happen. But for mm -hmm. the moment, I've had like probably a day or two of planning and then recording would take um, probably four or five hours for a okay. 15 to 20 minute lesson. Um, mm -hmm hoping to bring that down <laughs> but that includes sure. a lot of uh yeah it's setting up everything and getting it working and a lot of uh, what do you call it learning curves that's not the word I'm looking yeah. for but all the troubleshooting troubleshooting working. yeah all right um and I'm starting yeah. to actually I've changed it and sometimes it can take me longer well five five hours or whatever because I'm actually taking the stuff putting it in um, in my in my video editing program, just to see what it looks like, um, mm. hear if I made any mistakes, because I don't have anybody watching me and saying, "Oh, you just did that," or whatever. I only see it right. afterwards. So, um, and it can be a really simple mistake that you just I've got so much else to focus on, I didn't realize. So I, know, I hear you. Yeah. So um, so there's that, and then the editing process, which can take anything from twenty, thirty hours to fifty hours, if. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, depending on how things go. Yeah. And then some, yeah, then then that's then after that, um, sending it off to have some of my volunteers uh, who have good Greek to mm -hmm. watch them and um, yeah, and my my beginner st Greek student Bethany to <laughs> watch it and just tell me if the the <laughs> if it will be like Angela, I didn't understand sense. this part. All right, and then that. All right, then that helps me to know mm -hmm. how to change things. And then doing the editing necessary um, that the, from the feedback that I get. Mm -hmm. And then the publishing process, which takes a couple of hours to, to upload it onto YouTube yeah. and get everything sorted. Yeah, I'm always surprised by how long it takes me to finalize a video after right. everything's done. I have to watch it again. I usually export it and watch the exported version again to make sure that there weren't any little problems that didn't show inside the editing program, but that uh, that you'd only right. see after exporting it and then uploading it and then creating the thumbnail and writing the description. I mean, yeah, yeah. it takes a surprisingly long time just to get the thing finally on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, and you think, oh, I finished the video. Yeah. And two days later, you're still <laughs> publishing exactly. it out there. You're finally like, <laughs> able to publish it. I know. Yeah. I had I an know. exciting thing happen this week. Um, I'm visiting family here, and they have a really big HD TV, which I, I do not have a television. So mm. um, I got to watch my lessons on there. And so I oh. saw it from a totally different perspective and see, wow. oh, I can see little mistakes that I made in editing here much better. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> But, oh, that's yeah, the worst to seeing so. all your editing mistakes after you've published it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had that yesterday. I was going back and watching some old videos for a class we're teaching here in Mexico. And I was like, I did such a terrible editing job on this. <laughs> oh, and Andrew was like, don't worry about it. It's okay. I'm like, no, it's so bad. I'm so embarrassed. Mm. But that's the learning curve. You know, we all start out like I'd never really edited videos before, um, except right. for, you know, random little things. And so, yeah, definitely it's been a big learning curve. Yeah, you can add that to the time-consuming thing is when you don't know how to do something is then you go oh, Google, yeah. 
Google how all to the, do this. All the YouTube <laughs> tutorials should figure out. All right. <laughs> I know it. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, how many, how many lessons in advance do you kind of have in mind? Um, like me, for example, I kind of usually have a vague, fuzzy idea of roughly the next five lessons, like what topics I'm going to cover. Right. Um, but then that will usually change as I'm making the lessons and my add topic in or, you know, change things up. Things tend to change a lot as I'm going. But how far down the road are you able to see at this point? Yeah, pretty much the same. I remember you warning me about that in the beginning. Mm. <laughs> not to plan too many lessons in too much detail because it does change. And mm. it certainly does change because as you start teaching, you get new ideas and you think, oh, mm -hmm. wait, this you know, might be clearer if I, if I go in this direction or yeah. do this differently. Um, so I do have, I don't know, I probably have enough topics for the next 10 lessons, uh, five to 10 lessons, okay. but I don't know how they exactly which is going to come first. It's going to depend yeah. on, on how it works out. So at the moment, um, probably only two or, th excuse me, two or three lessons um, ahead. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes when life has been hectic, <laughs> which my life has been the last couple of months, I've mm -hmm. only been managed to really plan one lesson um, with a vague idea of what I'm going to do in the next couple of okay. ones. I mean, I know what I'm going to do, but it's not planned. It's not written down. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. For me, it's been helpful once I kind of got out of the stage that you're in now where you're still building like the super basics. Mm. Um, you're not able, you're kind of doing random Bible verses, but you're not to the point where you can tell a story from the Bible yet. So once I got out of that stage and into the point where we could start to tackle more simplified texts, mm. I've found it helpful to kind of choose what is the next text or simplified story that we're going to look at and oh, then right. kind of aim towards that. Okay, so f in order to understand that, what grammar and what vocabulary am I going to need to put in place to get to that story? And then those kind of serve right. as little milestones along the way for me. Um, yeah, so maybe you'll get to definitely. that point where you can kind of be guided by what texts you want to do. Yeah, I have already planned a couple of scriptures that I would like to um, some of the st first Bible stories that are going to be in the lessons, cool. but uh, the grammar is really too complicated for, at this stage. So yeah. although I'm working towards them, it's a little bit too far away to mm -hmm. um, say that they're, they're included in my plan. Uh, totally. But they are, um, you know, I, I'm still wrestling with whether to write a simplified Bible story because then you're changing the text, but I think it's mm. appropriate in this, um, probably like a children's Bible um, story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, but even so, it's uh, it's surprisingly difficult grammar for for a for a beginner. So yeah, um, what I have done is written a couple of just stories that are not biblical that have the same um, vocabulary and grammar, and slowly those stories would become a little bit you know slowly the grammar will become more complex until we're able mm -hmm. to understand a biblical story. But it'll take some time to get there. Cool. We look forward to that. That's exciting. Yeah. Very. Yeah, even when I, I, we feel like we've reached our goals, which I don't know, <laughs> sometimes I doubt whether that day will ever come. <laughs> we'll actually be like, yay, the course, it's done. Um, and by God's grace, someday that day will come, but I, sometimes I wonder. Um, but even then, I'd like to go back and write more simplified stories for different mm. levels. Yeah, um, right. Just add more content at those easy levels, more easy stories, more... Um, videos, especially at the really super beginning levels when people are trying to learn how to read um, and they need some simple literacy style books, uh, primer style stories to get going. So I think well, that this job will never end <laughs> because even yeah. when we finish, there's tons more content that we could be creating and uh, that people would could use. So, Well, let me use this as, a, as a, an opportunity to speak to you guys out there. If you are somebody who your biblical Greek is good and you like, um, mm -hmm. you want to get involved in somehow. There's so much work to do. We, you know, yeah. really can't do this on our own. And so if you would like to write some stories for us, um, we'd be so, so happy for you to do that. And it would be a great help. I've got one volunteer who's starting to um, write some simple stories for me. But cool. uh, we need more. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. Join join the team. We'd love to see an army of creators out there making simple stories in the biblical languages and making right. videos and or just illustrated books or whatever. It'd be really great. Yeah, yeah. That's what we'd love to see. Yeah, this is, I think you guys feel the same. This is not my, um, my work or whatever. It's really a team. And mm -hmm. for people, all people who have the heart to get biblical languages out there. Right. Um, we want you to get involved and help us to, to improve and to have more yeah. content and... Uh, yeah, give us and ideas. I, and I would say too that if you're at a point where you you know you you have a solid grasp of the grammar of say Hebrew or Greek, um, that trying to write simple stories in Hebrew or Greek will definitely reveal to you the holes that you have in your knowledge, as it did for <laughs> right. for me, and I'm sure you too, Angela. All of a sudden, you realize, wow, I didn't. There's a lot of questions that I need to figure out how to answer that I never thought of before when you were just reading the text for them when you're trying starting to. Uh, to compose in that language suddenly uh, it kind of forces your your knowledge to be challenged. You have to grow. So I think it's a fantastic way. I found for me personally that creating all these resources has been the biggest um, catalyst for growth in my own language abilities with Hebrew. Definitely. Um, I would Definitely. say the number one. I mean, I learned a lot in my classes and it's been great. But uh, having to go to the text to find the answers to my random questions that come up while composing in Hebrew has definitely been super, super valuable for my own growth in the language. Right. I think it, that applies to you across the board. Um, you can go to mm -hmm. university and get a degree and you've just learned all the stuff, but then how do you apply it? Yeah. And I think that's also with Greek. When you start trying to use a language, then you, as you say, you really start seeing how... how how well you've grasped the language. Mm -hmm. And I think with, with, uh, with uh, ancient Greek or biblical Greek, you, um, when you start speaking it, you find that there's things that you want to say that aren't in the text, <laughs> especially if right. you're limiting yourself to the New Testament, which um, you can't, you know. Um, so sometimes you're trying to think, how do I say this? There's no example in the New Testament. So you can look yeah. further, maybe in the Septuagint. Um, you can't find it there. Then you have to go and look and uh, further in other, <laughs> in other texts. And uh, maybe you don't find it there either. And yeah. then you have to just use um, the principle and try and, and try and just apply the principle. And I also just uh, consult other people whose Greek is better than mine. Mm. Um, well, and that's one of the advantages you have teaching Greek. Um, the grammar may be more complex, but you do have a way bigger corpus of texts right. from that era that mm -hmm. you can draw on. Yes. Um, whereas with Hebrew, we really only have the Hebrew Bible um, for that era. That's basically okay. the only text we have to work with. So if it's not there, you know, we could we could look to later versions of Hebrew, and but. Yeah, for that era, there's nowhere else to look. So it's not there, it's not there. So I kind of envy you that, that you have more like the classics and other mm. uh, other texts that you can go looking for your answers if you can't find it in the relatively short New Testament. Yeah. Well, I'm really looking forward to getting better at the technical side so I can have more time mm. to <laughs> read the classics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I know. There's like five different grammatical things in Hebrew I feel like I really need to investigate and like read a lot of uh, a lot of academic papers and stuff but um, yeah time time right. as a mom and trying to keep the videos coming I'm like all right Lord give me wisdom for what That's to prioritize challenge. right it's, it's so great that you guys have got so many different you're getting to the stage where you're producing all different kinds of resources so many resources for your students and also mm. for teachers. Um, I have mm -hmm. quite a few teachers writing to me and saying that they're so excited about the series that they started using it um, awesome. in their classes. And um, yeah, that's, that's exciting for me too. And I love to get that kind of feedback. And um, one of my goals in the future is hopefully to write kind of a manual for teachers um, on how to yeah. use these these. Um, to use these lessons in their classes um, because mm -hmm. I know that sometimes you get that's what it reminded me of it was when we were talking about how how do I say this I think that's one of the biggest challenges for teachers you know you have yeah. to learn to speak Greek and then you come to something I'm like well how do I say this and it'd be nice to have a resource to help 
definitely um, teachers with that and also just understand why did you say it like that i've never read that in a greek grammar <laughs> you know yeah and just explain yeah. yeah there's some really really simple things that you can't find in a grammar or necessarily written you know in the way that you need to hear it absolutely and yeah, so that's a long-term goal, goal though because we're going to get some lessons that's out cool first. <laughs> Yeah, I was just telling Andrew the other day, I feel like this this project that we've taken on gets bigger every year, not <laughs> <Right>. smaller. <laughs> like The vision just keeps expanding. I mean, there's just so many things I would love to make available to everybody. For example, one of my dreams is to like, well, one of our dreams is to create uh, or have somebody, some volunteer or somebody help us create um, like children's activities. So if you're doing the videos with kids, you can have like activities oh, for them wow. to do that go along with each lesson. I'd love to film doing specific interactive classroom activities and have instructions for those that also accompany each lesson so you could like watch lesson one together and do the activities together in a small group. I mean, ideas are overflowing. Time is what uh, <laughs> is not, there's not enough of to do all of this. All right. So yeah, I hope that as you continue to, you're able to, to put in place some really key uh, things that will help teachers as well, like you're saying. I think that um, God is gracious. So I think that he will provide at the right time because we can't mm -hmm. do everything at once. It's yeah. too overwhelming. So as we right. progress, um, bring the right people along and, and make it grow in the right direction. Absolutely. So the right time comes. One thing at a time. I mean, just three years ago when we started Olive with Beth, Andrew and I were talking the other day, we, we never imagined where we are today. So, I mean, we just have to see yeah. what God decides to do in the next three years um, and see what kind of other people he's brought along into our lives mm -hmm. to help out with different aspects and how he chooses to direct us. Let me ask you, what is your favorite part of, of this job? Ooh, well, it's a huge creative outlet for me to create the final project. To, I love teaching and I love bringing in all of the graphic design and beauty of trying to make something attractive and mm -hmm. and pedagogically fun. So mm -hmm. I get a lot of satisfaction just out of making the final product that I'm really excited to share with everybody. Um, so that's a big win for me. I, I love that part. Um, yeah. I also, um, like I said before, I'm always really excited to hear uh, when people take the time to write uh, nice comments or send us nice emails about how much uh, the lessons have helped them with their Hebrew or how they may have struggled in the past, but now they're finding they finally have some hope <laughs> of actually learning Hebrew and enjoying it or that their kids are learning it and their kids are excited yeah. about Hebrew and um, all of that. Those kind of testimonies are also a super highlight for me. So, yeah, those yeah. are a couple of the best things. Yeah. Well, you, you took all of them because <laughs> I think you and I are kind of similar. You can in that just say way. ditto. <laughs> ditto, <laughs> ditto, yeah. <laughs> Those definitely are the highlights. I also yeah. am a creative person, and so it's a it's a great way to to kind of I think all my creativity, different uh, aspects of it, that you get an opportunity to to use it here, teaching as well as right creating little props or drawings or whatever there is and the, mm -hmm. also enjoy the video editing yeah. and love hearing back from, from people who are enjoying it and children. And um, I think the other aspect is just the privilege of, of uh, doing this for the Lord and mm -hmm. seeing uh, just some things or oh, you can see it's his hand, you know, that's um, guiding us and providing and um, yeah, it's exciting to hear some testimonies. Absolutely. And I'm hoping to hear more testimonies from the field, from Bible translators. Yeah, as this gets into the hands of the people that we started out making it for right. more than anybody. Yeah. I'd say one thing that maybe might surprise people um, is that, because sometimes I tell people this and they're like, really? <laughs> but I, growing up, never was a camera person. Like, I was really uncomfortable with being <laughs> on camera. And um, especially video. Like, I didn't really like getting my photo taken, but even less did I enjoy being <laughs> on video. And so I just have to say God's grace it has helped me a lot in overcoming that. Um, also, my husband's encouragement has been really great in getting me to the point where I can just do an interview like this even and be comfortable. Um, right. 
So, you know, you never know. You might think, oh, I could never do that because I'm not a camera person. You know, God might surprise you. He really might. Um, so, yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that, that God often chooses us uh, mm -hmm. in what we think are our weaknesses because right. I definitely also am um, a super extro uh, introvert, <laughs> not extrovert. Mm. Um, and so... Being, being in front of a camera in front of lots of people is not my most comfortable place. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, speeches at school were my nightmare, having to get on the stage. But if I look back in my right. life, I've had some, I, I see how God has put me in different circumstances to help me get over that and to be able yeah. to do this. Yeah, I laugh sometimes. I think of all of my siblings, I was like the least likely to become a YouTuber. <laughs> here, here I am, no, the YouTuber too. of the family. <laughs> well, you do a great never job. Never saw that coming. Absolutely never saw that coming. So, <laughs> But it's definitely uh, been a little bit of a challenge to learn how to be okay with being out there, having my face in public like that. Um, you know, you feel exposed. I know you've experienced this too, Angela, a little bit. You mm -hmm. just feel a little bit vulnerable and exposed when you're... Your pronunciation, your voice, your face is out there so publicly. And um, I just do it for God's glory and may he help me. But definitely it's been a learning curve and, you know, uncomfortable at times, but he's helping me. Yeah. And we've learned to, to have a thick skin <laughs> because I don't <laughs> or know. Or thicker media. than before. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thicker. Yeah. Put it that way. <laughs> Maybe not thick all the way <laughs> yet. Yeah. We're still human. And there are some uh, people, I don't know, maybe forget that we're human. Yeah. Um, there's still comments that wrinkle comments. for like 24 hours and then you have to like move on. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, Oh, the overwhelming positive response and wonderful people out yeah. there who are enjoying this and are Absolutely. just to uh, make, make any negative comments go away. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, well, though, the, it's been overwhelmingly positive from you yeah. all, and we're so Definitely. thankful for that. Um, really thankful for all your encouragement because it means a lot. Yeah, constructive criticism is always, ex you know, I, that's, that is why I present my work to other people to look at before mm -hmm. we publish because For we, sure. want, we want good feedback. We do want to keep improving. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to say thank you again to all of you who are watching, especially to mm -hmm. those who um, are volunteering for us in some way or who are giving to make all this possible. And um, those of you who are praying for us, sometimes we have people send us say, hey, we're praying for you. We really appreciate that. That's just yes. such a big deal. So Absolutely. thank you all of, all of you who are taking part in this project in some way and um, really grateful. I feel I like to, we're on a team. <laughs> yes, you're part of our team. And I have Absolutely. to just deter that again, that prayer is just so central to this. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't talked about some of the challenges uh, but I know that prayer is so important to help us keep going forward and to mm -hmm. keep our eye on the goal. And yeah. also just thank you for those who have supported us financially. Um, wouldn't be able to do this without you, without your support and your encouraging words. And yeah, we're so grateful for you. So we wish you guys a happy new year. Yeah. Happy 2023. And Happy we look forward to you learning more Hebrew and more Greek with y'all. Yeah, we're really excited to, for next year and all the plans that we have that are that are we going to do for you. Yes, more videos that we can't wait to share because we get really excited about sharing videos with you all. Yeah, we do. Okay, thank you, Bethany. It's been all great right. to chat thank to you. Thank you, Angela. Yep, you take care. God Bye. bless. God bless. Bye. Bye.